Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. This is Beyond the Lines. I'm Rusty Komori. We broadcast live on Mondays at 10 a.m. from the Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This TV show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, which is about achieving and sustaining success, leadership, striving for excellence, and finding greatness. My guest today exemplifies all of this. He is Dr. Glenn Medeiros, president of St. Louis School. But in his early years, he achieved international stardom traveling the world performing his number one hit song, Nothing's Gonna Change My Love For You. We will be going in depth with him to find out why he is successful and how he is positively impacting countless students at St. Louis School. Today, we are going beyond education. Dr. Glenn Medeiros, great having you here today. Thank you for having me here. You, you sing three of my all-time <laughs> favorite songs on my all-time list, Watching Over You, <laughs> Lonely Won't Leave Me Alone, and of course, Nothing's Gonna Change My Love For You. You know you're dating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but to this day, I uh, still like, well, I, I love those songs. Well, most people don't know the other two songs. <laughs> but uh, no, that's, that's nice to hear. They need to go in depth and listen to that whole CD. <laughs> yes. It's a great CD. Thank you, thank you so much. Now, you grew up on Kauai. Yes, I did. Can I you tell me about you're growing up? Well, I grew up on the island of Kauai, and uh, until this very day, I feel so blessed that I've had the chance to grow up in a small little town and learn so much. Uh, family is number one there, and I grew up around a, a great family, wonderful parents, and uh, it's, it was a great experience for me growing up there. What, what did you do in your youth? Did you just hang out at Hamura Simon all day? Or, you know, what, what did you do? What kind of things? Well, um, I did what most people do, actually. Uh, life is simple there. So I'd grow up, uh, go to school. Uh, that was a big part of our lives and everyone's life there. Uh, go to the beach on the weekends, go to church, yeah. uh, play sports. So uh, life was simple. And, and I think that was important for me. It helped me to ground me. And, and uh, Kauai is special in particular. Uh, for my family, my, my, my mother grew up on the plantation, on Kauai and McBride right. Plantation. And, and so I remember in my younger years uh, going to the plantations and, and uh, experiencing, listening to kachi kachi music and, and, uh, and all the wonderful food at the potlucks. <laughs> and, and so uh, I, I was born and raised at a time where I could still learn a, l a little bit about old Hawaii then. So what, what did your parents do? Uh, my father uh, was a tour guide, actually, and uh, and so it was wonderful. Sometimes he'd take me on his on his tour bus, and and I'd get to meet people from all over the world, and and he 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 loved to sing on the bus and, and share stories. He was a history buff like me. Uh, my mother uh, would st would stay at home. She my mom and dad wanted to have someone at home to watch over the kids, and and uh, and she she was she's an amazing mother and. And I'm very lucky because of that. So she watched, watched us very closely. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first realize that you had an incredible talent for singing? I always remember singing. Really? I, I don't know when it started, but uh, my mother is a really great singer. And she never performed publicly, but she would sing at home all the time. She'd have, we'd have a record player on, and we'd just sing. You know, she, she loved Elvis. So grew up singing a lot of Elvis and, <laughs> and uh, we, we'd we sing together and uh, my that side of the family, my mother's side of the family, there are a lot of really talented uh, singers and dancers. I can't dance but some of my family members can. <laughs> I think your mom and my mom would get along great because my mom is a huge Elvis fan as well. Oh great, great. <laughs> now Brown Bags to Stardom in high school you entered Brown Bags of Stardom in ninth grade. Yes. And you won uh, Kauai. Yes. And in the statewide competition, you didn't place. Yes. What happened in this Brown Bags of Stardom <laughs> thing? Well, uh, it, it was a good experience for me because I, I'm naturally a very kind of shy person. So people that know me well uh, understand that. 
And it took a lot for me to start entering contests, but I was lucky enough to have a couple of teachers growing up in elementary school that really encouraged me to get out there, uh, which is one of the reasons why I actually eventually chose to become an educator, because of them. But I entered in the ninth grade. I was lucky enough to win the, the uh, competition at Kauai High School and then uh, the island of Oahu, I mean the island of Kauai. And then on Oahu, I didn't place in the top three, and I was very discouraged. I, I, I felt, oh, I must have done something wrong. Maybe I didn't <laughs> choose the right song. Uh, I was, I think I was, uh, was confident because I had won several contests on Kauai, but at the same time, uh, I, I needed that experience of, of losing, uh, of not being able to win all the time. Sure. And and uh, the next year, I went back and and um, won the the uh, the same contest again on Kauai. Got to Oahu, and the second time I got there, I, I just thought, I said, you know, I'm going to go here. I'm just going to experience it. Whatever happens, happens. Last time I went, I met a, a lot of great people, and I'm just going to look forward to the positive aspects of it. And then I ended up winning. So. Uh, but it was a good lesson for me to sure. just keep putting yourself out there and, and eventually something will happen because a lot of it is subjective in nature. Yeah. Uh, it just depends on the judges that are there and whether they like the type of singing you do or music you're singing. That's good that you were resilient and you, you bounced back and yes. winning it as a 10th grader. That's yes. amazing. Yes. And then you went on to sell millions of CDs, so mm -hmm. to date, over seven million CDs. Yes. So how did all of this happen? Oh, good question. Uh, it, uh, a lot of times it's, it's luck, uh, but, but you have to be prepared when that luck comes about. So, so I, I had worked really hard on, on trying to get myself out there, and eventually after winning Brown Bags to Stardom, uh, it just one thing led to another. Program director at I-94, Jay Stone, yeah. uh, took, had a friend in Arizona, said, why don't you give this song some play, some rotation. He played in Arizona. Just so happens that there was a, a record executive vacationing in Arizona, <laughs> heard it, listened to it, found that it was number one on request there, uh, signed me to his independent recording label. And next thing you know, the song was becoming popular in the United States but didn't really have the push of a major recording label. And so uh, it uh, became popular on the West Coast and then the East Coast. It eventually topped at about number 11 in the United States. But once I was signed to MCA Records and Polygram Records and they were able to do a, a general push on the record, the song uh, went to number one in almost every country it was released. It was, it was amazing to, to be able to see that. Nothing's gonna change my love for you like you said, became number one in over 20 countries. Yes, yes. That's amazing. And then you, and then you became, you had a collaboration with Bobby Brown. Yes. How did that happen? Well, I mean, there's an interesting story behind that. Uh, my, my career had, had been doing well in Europe, not so much in the United States, and I, I had been working hard at MCA Records to, uh, with record executives to see, okay, what, what kind of records should we do? I wanted to continue on the approach that I was taking, which is somewhat like a Richard Marks type yeah. uh, sound. But the record company had said no, uh, uh, grunge music was just starting to become popular and hip hop, and they kind of wanted to move away from artists that were doing pop music. And so, uh, basically, they kind of actually kind of forced me into the, the hip-hop thing. And it, although I love listening to hip-hop music, uh, they basically said, you know, Glenn, you either do this or you don't have a recording deal. Wow. And so I ended up moving forward with it. And I was a huge fan of, of Bobby, and he was in between records at the time. And, and MCA Records thought that uh, once we started recording the, the hip-hop tunes, one in particular they liked a lot, and they felt that if they had Bobby rap on it, that, that it would be more likely that it would become a hit, and, and that was true. It ended up becoming number one. Yeah, that song, She Ain't Worth It, uh -huh. and you know, in that video, yeah. you said you can't dance. I saw you dancing <laughs> in that video. No, no. You, you had some moves in that <laughs> no. video. So no, no. people need to see you no, no, no. dancing in that video. I wouldn't video. call that dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still have my students today to this very day saying, oh my God, Dr. Madaris, you shouldn't be dancing like that. <laughs> now, being world famous and traveling the world singing, what did you like and not like about doing that? Uh, for me in particular, what I did not like was the fact that I was a very family-oriented person. It was difficult to be away from home. Uh, I, I missed my family and my friends. It was, it was tough. Uh, in that particular time, just to make a phone call could easily cost you know two three hundred dollars for about a, you know ten minute phone call. Sure, it was just so expensive. So you didn't have the technology there to keep in touch with your families. 
uh, didn't speak the language in most places that I went to. Uh, that was tough. The, the positive aspect of it was that I got to learn about a lot of different cultures, a lot of, um, a lot of the stereotypes, a lot of the assumptions that I had about, about me as an American or me living in Hawaii and what the rest of the world was like. Uh, things became a lot clearer to me when I started traveling. So my whole idea of perspective kind of changed during that process. I heard you are a great father and husband. You're, you're a great family man. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit more about your family? Well, I, I had great ro role models. My, my parents, my, my father worked uh, six days a week, but on the one day a week when he was off on Sundays, he, if family was it, that's all he would do. I mean, just spend the whole day with us, go to church, uh, play sports, go to the beach. And so that sent a real clear message to us that you know family is number one, God is important, they're going to church, uh, and and then having fun too, uh, being uh, going to uh, going to different sports and, and following football. We're big football fans growing up. My mother was always there for us. Uh, very, very. Uh, she would she would always try to warn us against what you know what not to do. <laughs> and and I, I try to do the same thing. And uh, luckily for me, uh, it's a partnership with my wife. I've been married for 21 years now. And congratulations. And, uh, thank you. And and my wife is is truly amazing. She's she's helped to make me a, a better person. And. And, uh, and I, I feel truly blessed uh, to be a part uh, of this uh, duo, you know, mom and dad, just trying our best to raise our kids. You obviously have a passion for singing and songwriting. Mm -hmm. And your kids, what are your kids' names? <laughs> well, my son's name is Chord, C-H-O-R-D, okay. and my daughter's name is Lyric. And a lot of people think that was my idea, but it was my <laughs> wife's idea. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, and, and you know, to their credit, they've taken it pretty well. You know, people will ask them, what, what was your name again? But uh, they, they both, ironically, they, they love music. My son plays the bass and, uh, and he, he enjoys that and my daughter likes to sing. And so uh, luckily for both of them, they've, they've been able to kind of carry on that, that, that gift. And, and so I'm really proud of them. But I'm, I'm most proud of them because of the people that they've become. Uh, Cord, Cord uh, I'm so proud of him for graduating from St. Louis School and, and accomplishing the things he has done in school. And, and my daughter at Punahou School is doing, doing a great job there. Awesome. Now, beyond singing and songwriting, what else do you have a passion for? Well, uh, that's, singing and songwriting is big, uh, but for me, I, there are a couple of things. Uh, I, I do I really enjoy playing tennis, ironically. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> there. Yes. That's great. I could use some lessons, so maybe we could talk about that. But, but I, I love playing tennis. I play it almost every weekend, and it's just one of those things that I can just do for hours on end. And I just love it. Uh, I, I don't ever feel like I'm exercising when I'm playing tennis. Uh, it's it's just so much fun. I I also uh, I, I like to I, I spend time with my family. I, I love uh, football. I'm an incredibly huge football fan. I'm a 49ers fan. Yeah. <laughs> and so I play a lot of fantasy football with my friends, and and I'll spend a lot of time watching football with my son. Well, you must be happy that the 49ers have Garoppolo now. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> thank you. Yes. yes. Now, how did how did teaching come about? How did your love for teaching evolve? Well, my love for teaching evolved actually when I started school. I always held uh, teachers very high. I, I've always respected them. Uh, and, and it was about the third grade when a teacher uh, came to me and made a huge difference in my life. His name is Arnold Meister. He was my music teacher in elementary school. And he did something very simple. He just he noticed that I had a talent in singing. And he said, Glenn, you need to nurture this. You need to get out and you need to put it out there. You need to share this gift that you have. And I was very, very nervous in front of crowds and people. I had a difficult time talking to people. And, uh, and he encouraged me to get out there. And, and the feeling that I got from it really helped me overall. It helped me to gain confidence so that I could do other things better. And, uh, and so immediately I said, I want to be like him. I want to be a teacher. I want to make a difference in other people's lives. And I, I never thought that the singing would actually take off, you know, knowing that I was from Kauai. And, so far away from LA and New York, and but uh, but I I had to put that on hold uh, until the music career started uh, fading a little bit. Before joining St. Louis, what what schools did you teach at? So I started as a public school teacher at Milani Middle School, and uh, learned a lot there. 
And, and then I moved on to St. Joseph's School in, in White Pahu. I, I taught music there and uh, to, to K to, uh, pre K to, to eighth grade. And then I moved uh, to Island uh, Pacific Academy and uh, I taught elementary school there. And then I moved to Marino School, where Great. I was a high school teacher and then an administrator. Great. Uh, after, after that, I actually, once I achieved my doctorate degree, I, I moved to Shamanan University and worked there for a year as a professor, and then found out about the opportunity at St. Louis School. Awesome. Yeah. Glenn, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. And when we come back, I want to really talk to you about the amazing things that you're doing at St. Louis School. OK, thank you. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my guest, Dr. Glenn Medeiros. We will be back in one minute. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground. Uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. If you are just joining us, my guest today is Dr. Glenn Medeiros, president of St. Louis School. Glenn, it's great having you here today. Thank you. Um, in 2015, you became head of school principal mm -hmm. for St. Louis School. Mm -hmm. And then in 2017, you became president of St. Louis School. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how, why you love St. Louis and the students so much. Well, uh, it's a special place. Uh, as soon as I stepped in, I, I didn't honestly, I. I came in as an outsider. There were uh, over 100 people that interviewed for the position of head of school, and I did not. Uh, I, I thought to myself, this would be a good experience for me to try and interview for the position, not thinking that I would actually uh, attain it. Uh, so I came in as an outsider, and I have just been blown away by the people at St. Louis School. Uh, some of the most amazing people I've ever met, and if you if you talk about leadership, there's so many great leaders have have come from St. Louis School, and I've had the opportunity to work with them on a daily basis, so it's helped me to grow. Uh, as far as the students are concerned, it's, uh, those students are so special. Uh, they, in, being in an all boys environment at school kind of brings out a different side to the students. Sure. Uh, and, and you get to know them at a different level and uh, it's been a great experience so far. Well, you are a great leader and a person's beliefs are very important, extremely important. What are your <coughs> principles and values? Ah, that's a tough question. Uh, I, I think that continues to grow for me each and every day. Uh, my, my, I, I don't think of myself as a great leader. I, I think of myself as someone who is continuing to learn uh, each and every day, and I hope to become a great leader someday. Uh, as far as my leadership is concerned, I, I think intention is, is very important. Uh, what is your intention? And my intention has always been I, I want to be in a position where I can help. Uh, and one of the reasons why I chose to try for the position at St. Louis School is, is because I, I know that many Catholic schools right now are, are suffering. And, and, and I wanted to be a part of, uh, of a Catholic school, of being a part of a team that helps to turn it around so that we can make people aware of the wonderful things that are happening at, at, at the school and in Catholic education in general. Well, in my book, I talk about leadership and the difference between leaders and bosses and what makes great leaders. And great leaders are always learning. They're always evolving. <clears throat> you check off all those boxes oh, thank you. in terms thank of you. being a great leader. Thank and you. that's why I know you're a great leader already. I've been seeing things from the outside, what <laughs> you're doing with St. Louis, and it's incredible. It's exciting thank things. Thank you. Um, 
St. Damien. What is St. Damien's connection to St. Louis School? Well, a lot of people don't know that St. Damien actually attended St. Louis School. St. Louis School was started in 1846. Uh, it was called the Humimano College on the windward side of the island. Wow. And uh, St. Damien actually attended school, uh, graduated from Humimano College, and went on to do the incredible things that he did. Uh, he went on to, of course, inspire people like Mahatma Gandhi, who then inspired uh, Martin Luther King. And, and there are many examples of St. Louis graduates that have gone on to do well. And I think part of it is because of um, uh, just uh, the, what Catholic education does provide people. It talks not just about people being leaders, but being servant leaders, people that go out there to make a difference in the community, to be out there for others. And, and I think that's important. You know, at St. Louis School, we want them to learn about science, of course, but, but what will you do with that knowledge once, once you attain that knowledge? What will you do with your, that next discovery that you do? Will you do something to help society or to hurt society or, or just to, to, to make some type of, uh, uh, um, to, to gather power or, 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 or to make money? Uh, so I think that's what really makes uh, a Catholic education special. I, I had no idea about that St. Damien connection and St. Louis. I, I think that's absolutely fantastic and yes. amazing. Yes. I had no idea. Yes. And yeah, not a lot of people know about that, actually. Yeah. Now, let's shift gears to football. I know a lot about St. <laughs> Louis football and yes. their dominance there. Yes. Now, St. Louis football, I mean, they're the reigning champs, and mm -hmm. they have incredible success through Coach Cal Lee and yes. Coach Ron Lee. It's amazing. Now, how do you get your other sports teams up to that level? Oh, that, that's a good point uh, that you make. Uh, we, we've had success over the years uh, in, in different sports. Uh, at one point, uh, I think in the 50s or so, uh, we, we were pretty dominant in, in basketball. Uh, and and we've we've done well. Uh, I think we won the state championship in 14-15 in baseball. But when you talk about dominance, yes, and in football, that's been the one thing that you know year after year, uh, we've had that tradition of that. And I'm very proud of that, and we want to continue that uh, because uh, and, and thanks to Coach Cal and uh, Ron and Cal, they've been able to perpetuate that. Uh, as far as the other sports, I think part of it is facility. So we're working on a brand new uh, athletic center, a chain Great. athletic center, and we should start building that in, a, in another uh, two months. Awesome. It looks like we're going to. Uh, of course, we're getting through the whole permit process and all of that. But, but I think providing more practice time for basketball and volleyball teams will help. Um, I, I do think it's a little challenging for Catholic schools because a lot of our, our best players um, will, will you know, uh, go to other schools sometimes when they hit their freshman year. A lot of our kids are going to Punahou and Ilani elsewhere. So that, that uh, I think, hasn't happened so much on the football side, but maybe in the other sports. And, and that's okay, too. You know, people have to find the right fit sure. for themselves. And there are a lot of great schools out sure. there. Yeah, and are. we're very lucky in Hawaii. And, but uh, but uh, we're, we're going to try and help on the facility side, and, um, and, and we just keep finding the right people. Ultimately, I think a lot of it comes down to coaching, too, and finding the right mixture of coaches. You yeah. can be a great coach, but maybe not necessarily in a certain environment. So finding, finding the right coach for the right environment is important. Completely agree. Now, <laughs> let's talk about Marcus Mariota and Tua Tungavailoa. Yes. They are incredible role models and mm -hmm. great represent, representatives yes. of St. Louis School and Hawaii. Yes. Can you share some insights about them? Well, I've been lucky enough to get to know Tua at a pretty personal level because he was there at school uh, when I was there. Unfortunately for me, I wasn't there at St. Louis School when Marcus was there, but I did have the chance to fly up to Tennessee and meet with him and, and meet with his family. and. Uh, Marcus has done so much for St. Louis School, and I think he's done a lot because the first thing people will say is, he's just such a nice guy. Yeah, like, he's he is. So, such a nice person, and uh, to the core, such a good person. And I think that has a lot to do with his parents. His parents are just amazing people. Um, he's so giving, so kind. And I think one of the reasons why our enrollment, you know, at about five years ago was uh, somewhere in the mid 500s, and now we're at about 900 students, is because of what he's done. He's he's gone out there and said, "Look, if you go to St. Louis School, here's your potential. This is this is what you can potentially become." For two, I was so proud of him at the end of the Alabama game. Oh yeah. I was sitting there thinking, "Okay, what is he going to say?" <laughs> and and the first thing he did say, say is that he wanted to praise God. 
and, and again, that a lot of it comes down to his family. You meet his family members, and, and their faith in God is, is so strong, and, and, and it is in him too. So I think both of them, I pray for them all the time, and I hope that both of them will continue to inspire others to, to, to do whatever they dream they would like to do. Well, Marcus and Tua, they stayed at St. Louis all the way through. They yes. didn't switch schools at all. And, yes. and look at the people that they've become yes. because of St. Louis. Yes. Now, since you joined St. Louis, you've been doing amazing things for the school. Can you share with me some of those things? Well, you know, I, I'd like to take credit for it, but it's been a real team effort. I, I'm supported by a lot of incredible uh, graduates of the school. Uh, people like Walter Dodds, people like Tony Guerrero, uh, people like Mike Hogan, um, uh, Daryl Hoke, uh, just many people that have worked together. We've done several different things. The first thing we did was we, we, uh, we basically took all of our classrooms and had it uh, renovated. And so people were not willing to pay a lot of money to come to a school where you have dilapidated classrooms. So that was one thing that we've done. And we've done a lot of fundraising for that and a lot of hard work on that. Uh, the other thing we've done is we've we basically taken a look at our, our curriculum and, and we said, okay, do we want to grow St. Louis men from the sixth grade or do we want to start from kindergarten? And we felt that it would be important for us to grow St. Louis men from the age of kindergarten. And, and, and so we started our elementary school uh, in my second year and we were able to take these classrooms that we were literally using as storage, turn it into uh, an, an elementary school. And, and that elementary school has grown in the last two years and has been doing well. Uh, we've also had, uh, other than the renovations, uh, other than that, we've also taken a look at our, our uh, curriculum to try to see what can we do. And so we've been trying to install this uh, blended learning curriculum where, where students can learn in a traditional fashion, where everyone's moving at the same level, the grade level, learning the same text, learning the same information, but then also providing the teachers resources so that students can move in their own zone of possible development. So if they're falling behind, there, there's some help that they can get so that they can catch up. Or if they want to push forward, we have the programs that will allow them to be able to push forward in, in, in their skills. So a lot of different things have been happening, but. Uh, but we were really excited about it. And then finally, of course, we entered into a collaboration with Kamehameha Schools, knowing that we have a population of about 53% um, uh, Hawaiian students. Wow. And, uh, and so they've been able to help us and, and help to fund our, our Hawaiian students to attend St. Louis School. And that just started this year. Now, high school graduation is always special, and you greatly care for every student at St. Louis. Mm -hmm. But this last month's graduation was extra special for you. Yeah. Can you share what happened? Well, you know, St. Louis School has been around for 172 years, and people were stating before graduation, they said, you know, Glenn, you're making history because this is going to be the first time that a president uh, gives his son uh, a diploma, and uh, and so for me, I was very excited about that. Now, little did I know that there were people behind the scenes <laughs> making other plans. So I I was about to uh, give my son his degree, and they kind of stopped the proceedings and said, "Hey, uh, they started talking about this person that had been there for three years and had done all these things." And I thought, "Oh." What are they talking about? And all of a sudden, <laughs> they asked me to come up, and, and my son actually gave me an honorary uh, award as a, a, a degree uh, uh, for at St. Louis, uh, to become a St. Louis school graduate. And for me, I have to say that that's one of the greatest honors in, in my life, I, I have to say. I, not only because I have so much respect for St. Louis school and the graduates uh, that have, have walked through those halls, but also, having my son uh, give that to me, it was, a, it was a special moment, and uh, I'll never forget it, and, and I'll never take it for granted. I, I, I try my very best to, to make the best decisions for St. Louis School as a whole, and it may be that some people may not always agree with what I do, but I know in my heart that I'm trying to make the best decision for the school to survive and thrive. Well, thanks for sharing that. That that I, we can only imagine what you were feeling. That that's amazing <laughs> that your son was able to present that to you on Thank his you. graduation oh, day. Oh, it's, it's an amazing day. Uh, I was numb the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> now you 
you shared some great insights into you know why you're successful and the exciting times for St. Louis and what's coming. And just want to really thank you again for being here. Oh, thank you so yeah, much. Thank thanks you. for all that you do. Oh, thank thanks. You. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Rusty Komori reminding you to strive for excellence every day and find your greatness and help others find theirs. Please tune in next Monday as we go in-depth with Governor David Ige. Aloha.